الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله لمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد فأعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من نفخه ونفثه وهمزه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب ومن يتوكل على الله فهو حسبه إن الله بالغ أمره قد جعل الله لكل شيء قدرا وفي الآية So I recited before you after the Masnoon Khutbah ayah number, part of ayah number 2 and 3 ending of 2 and 3 Surah Talaq and then the same surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرًا ذَلِكَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ أَنْزَلَهُ إِلَيْكُمْ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ وَيُعْظِمْ لَهُ أَجْرًا صدق الله العلي العظيم So this is the foundation ayah of the Quran that will strengthen our subject matter inshallah so Allah says I'm going to translate inshallah I'm using Muhsin Khan's translation sometime I will interject my own uh, explanation of the words also you know to make it simplified inshallah so ending of the ayah 2 Allah says whomsoever or whosoever fears Allah obeys Allah and keeps his duty to him meaning to Allah Almighty Allah meaning he Allah will make a way for him to get out from every difficulty Allah will provide him an outlet as many other translations also supporting the same thing then he says and Allah he will provide him meaning the per to the person from sources he never could have imagined that that person whoever is in the difficulty who once you do that Allah will give you things that you would have never imagined provide outlets provision everything and whomsoever puts his trust in Allah, then Allah, meaning he, Allah, will suffice him. Verily, Allah will accomplish his purpose. SubhanAllah. Allah, indeed, will accomplish his purpose. Indeed, Allah has set a measure for all things. In the same surah, and the next ayah, then at the end of the ayah, Allah again reminds us. He says, whoever obeys Allah, Whoever fears Allah, obeys Allah, and also loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make the matter easy for him, make things easy for him. And then, ending of ayah 5, again Allah says, Whoever obeys Allah, Allah will actually wipe out his sins. And Allah will reward him, enlarge, increase his reward, subhanAllah. And then, it, and then another reminder in the same surah, at the end of ayah 7, he says, And then for such people, سَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ بَعْدَ عُسْرٍ يُسْرًا After every difficulty, Allah will provide ease. SubhanAllah. So, un until ayah 7, these are our key reminders. And the surah number is 65. So, having said that, my brothers and sisters, our conversation is centered around the, this concept or uh, the, the topic that we chose is how to manage stress. Notice I did not say how to eliminate stress, how to not have stress. I said and the title is the management of stress in our academic lives. Also add with that our, our professional lives. It's all linked. And then our personal lives. So you can say two big pictures or academic, professional, and personal, three pictures. And... Of course, it starts with ourselves. Now, I did not say how to not have stress for a reason. Because in life, it is impossible, it is impossible to have a purposeful life, have a meaningful life, and then not have challenges, not have stressful events, not have um, 
you know, sometimes sad events, not have calamities, not have difficulties, not have trials and tribulations. All of this is destined with it. It is inevitable. We will face those. So unless we want to have a meaningless life, do nothing type of life, yeah, we can say we will never have a stress. And that, that kind of life actually cannot be in this world. This world is an exam room, is a test place. It will happen that there will be difficulties. There will be trials and tribulations. Now, in the light of these ayat of the Quran, remember, in our life, just like you see the ocean, sometimes there are waves that are going up, waves are going down, there are storms, there are calm days when the ocean is very calm. But at the, at the end of the day, ocean contains a lot of benefits. It has treasures, it has pearls, it has life, it has, you know, fish, seafood, and other so many benefits. Sh uh, sailing the ships and, you know, making trade and so many things. Just like that. Or look at life, even if you look at millionaires, billionaires, people who are richest of the richest, anything they want, they can have it in the blink of an eye. SubhanAllah, like a heaven in this world. They also have stress. And they will. Nobody can say they don't have stress. If they're saying that they don't have any stress, then probably they don't know the reality of life or they're, um, excuse me, they're uh, denying a reality or they are being ignorant about it. They just don't know it yet or they haven't faced the reality yet. They haven't been hit with it. So wherever there are flowers, wherever there is beauties, uh, there will be thorns, there will be bushes, there will be, you know, bad weed, there will be problem. There will be grass grasshoppers. There will be bugs. There will be problems. It, it is inevitable. It is part of life. Keep just keep that in mind, inshallah. And then these, in the light of these ayat, what will help is I want to say three things. If we know these three things, inshallah, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> these three things, if we know, inshallah. No stressful event will be stressful for us. Number one, three things. Please make it as a take home. Whenever in life, whether in our studies, in our education, through our professors, academics, whatever, whatever we are dealing with, or even challenges of like, okay, hard subject. This is very difficult. How can I do it? Remember, whatever stress I'm going through, number one, remember, Allah knows it. Because Allah is Alim, Allah is Khabir, Allah is Basir, He knows, He's well informed, He's Muqeet, He's Raqib, He's watching, everything is under His watch. So don't think that Allah has abandoned you. Remember what He told Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Beautiful, beautiful ayah. In Surah Wa duha it's a famous surah of Jews. I'm, uh, I don't know the surah number on top of my head. Uh, but Allah said, first Allah swore by the morning. Allah swore by the night. And then the very first thing Allah told Prophet ﷺ, Your Rabb, Muhammad, your Rabb, Allah has not abandoned you. Allah is with you. Allah Allah is there for you. The surah, ayah, the surah number is uh, Wa duha 93. Surah 93. And ayah number is uh, three, I think. I just read it. Ayah number three, yes. Surah 93, Surah al duha A great comfort that Allah has not abandoned us. He knows. He knows what we're going through. He knows our situation. He knows our problems. What has come to us, it has come with His wisdom, with His knowledge. That takes us to the second point. Allah is wise. He's Hakim. Not only he is alim, he's also hakim. So point number two, whenever a stressful event of life hits us, point number two is remember Allah is wise. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wise. It has happened with his infinite wisdom. He's hakim. And there are many other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that help us understand part of this wisdom al-hakim look you know we see an accident on the road 
a very stressful event. We see a snowstorm. And we may think that, okay, because of this snowstorm, I've missed my flight. Man, what a terrible thing. I was going for Umrah. I was going for Hajj. And I missed my flight today. And I might have been one of those people, you know, who are going on the day of Arafah or one day before Arafah, meaning I cannot have more than six or seven days off. And I am taking a plane on the 7th of Zul Hajj. And I have to be there by the 8th or no later than 9th. And then I cannot make it just because I missed one flight, you know, 24 hours. And then you lose time going toward Middle East. Or even if you don't lose time, there is a high chance that you would miss Umrah and Hajj. Everything was done right from your side. You made tawbah, let's say. You made tawbah. You repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything you did. But maybe there are things that I don't know. Number one, there might be a harm for me during this travel. Maybe this plane, that, that plane was astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, I hope not, was going to crash and Allah saved my life. Number one reason. Number two reason, maybe, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to make more tawbah Purify me more and more and more so that now I'm completely cleansed and I'm ready for the big test of Hajj. Maybe I am, I, my heart is still sinful. I, I still have defects in my Iman. I still have like, you know, those cracks, cracks in the windows or in the, in the walls from where shaitan could sneak in. Allah wants me to patch those, repair those, cleanse my heart, remove all the rusting. So there are sins that are still in my way. So I have to do this critical evaluation of my own self whenever something that I did has not been met. Remember the wisdom of Allah, don't question that. Two, that's two-part, two-pronged thing. Remember, part one, Allah is aware. Part two, Allah is wise and then I have to evaluate myself. I have to evaluate myself. Because, why do I have to do that? Allah is not an oppressor. That is part three, number three. So one, two, and three. So two have part A and B. Number three is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. He loves mercy. 99 parts of his mercy he has reserved for the day of judgment. And all the love, kindness, forgiveness, and mercy you see today on this earth, Allahu Akbar, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy for us. Excuse me, just one second. Okay, so let me rephrase where I was. Three important things we have to remember. Allah is alim. He's aware. He's khabir. He's raqib. He's basir. He's watching. These are all of the all attributes of the 99 names that we have to remember in these times. Number two, you have to remember Allah is wise. Allah is Hakim, he's, he's Aziz, and he's Hakim, he's wise. And number three, Allah is merciful. He's very merciful to the believers, especially to Muslims. He has extra mercy for them. So how could it be that I am under some kind of stress? No, it is like you go to a doctor. A doctor is not poking an injection to you because a doctor hates you, or you're getting your tooth extracted. Excuse me, I hope not. I hope none of you go through that. But let's say you're having a tooth extraction. It is very painful. Tooth pain is one of the most painful things, you know, one could ever have. It's stressful. It hurts. But again, why it's happening? It's happening because there is a greater good behind that. So when a believer is tested and a believer, let's say, has not uh, earned this, then definitely it's a blessing. Now, let's say it's not something that the believer would have been through if it wasn't for the actions. For instance, like Allah says in the Quran, two ayat. مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Surah Taghabun, the Surah 64, Surah that is just before Surah Taraq. He says, any musibah, any calamity, any stressful event that happens in, to you in life, it happens with the permission of Allah, with the will of Allah, with the knowledge of Allah. Remember we talked about it, Allah is alim. Now, Allah says, sometime, the wrong that happens to you, not the good. Usually we always take the credit for the good. Oh, mashallah, I did it, I earned it. But Allah says, وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ Allah. Allah says that when, when things that you don't like, things that you, are, you, 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 uh, you hate, like, oh my God, what am I going through? 
if it's a bad event, let's say you did everything, you took the stress in a positive way and you subhanAllah worked hard and astaghfirullah, bad things happened to you. It could be because of our own sins. It could be because we have made the mistake and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually purifying us. SubhanAllah. So even the calamity for a believer, even a punishment for a believer in this world is a purification. Let's say I was a very bad person and I was committing harams, astaghfirullah, you know, all the major sins and all that, and I get COVID-19. And I die from it. That, I'm giving my example. That's why I'm not saying you, me. Let's say me. I go through COVID and I was doing all the haram things. COVID came to me as what? Is it a test from Allah? It's a punishment from Allah. Actually, it is a punishment that will purify my sins. And after that, Allah will raise me as a martyr because I'm still a Muslim. If I am still a Muslim. If a bad event happens in life and I remain Muslim and I say astaghfirullah that I know I have done something because of which Allah has put me through this test, it is definitely my fault. It is not just fate. You know, fate and action go hand in hand. I am patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I know that it has still something good for me. I correct my affairs and I try at least and I die with it. Prophet says, Muslim. All these epidemics, pandemics, diseases, plagues are martyrdom for a believer. Allahu Akbar. So three things remember in mind, keep it in mind that Allah is merciful. Allah does not like punishing people. Allah does not, does not like hurting people. Often it is man-made. So having said that, often a lot of our stresses are of an, our own creation. Whether they are academic, whether they are um, even pandemic related or professional or they are personal. For instance, I'll now give you a couple of life examples. For example, academic stress. All the semester I was procrastinating. Okay, yes, the project is not due until you know, last week of the semester. I'll start my work in the last week, not the last day, mashallah. And then it turns out to be, oh my God, it's a killer. Then I give stress to my whole family. I give stress to myself. For, actually, start with myself. Hurting myself, not sleeping well, not eating well. Oh my God, just destroying myself in every way possible. And then I am edgy. I am grouchy. I am mean to people. And I am mean to my family and friends. Oh man, I have this going on. MashaAllah. The whole world feels it. SubhanAllah. Our world around it. So this stress is actually my own made. And then I, you know, how can I blame fate? Oh, why did I choose this subject? This was a horrible professor, horrible subject. Oh, I didn't study. It's me who I didn't study. It's me who was procrastinating. And you know, mashallah, we are the champions of procrastination. <laughs> we are the champions of procrastination. So that stress is manageable. That is my key point here. Remember, I promised you 15, 20 minutes, that not more than that, inshallah. I'm wrapping up here. It is a manageable stress. So number one advice I have is try to manage stress. If you think... The stress will never happen in life. Let's say you did manage it well and still you felt the stress. Alhamdulillah. That type of stress is good for us. As long as we have a belief that this stress, this hard work will pay off. We know it's for a good reason. Whether it's in the academic life, professional life or personal life. You know, raising the kids. Look, look what our moms and dads go through. They put investments. They spend, work extra. They find every penny possible to get, give us a good home, give us a good living, good rides, comfortable, everything nice. They, they went through a lot of stress, but it's a managed stress. They could have easily chosen to stay homeless and not care about us that don't worry, stay, state will provide for you. Uh, but they worked extra hard. They made sure that no, we will be answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. And we want to make sure our kids are productive citizens of the society. They, 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 they are promoting harm, harmness and goodness in the society. So mashallah, that's a managed stress. So if you have a meaning in life, you have a purpose in life, they want to raise you as a good Muslims and you want to be a good Muslim and you want your next generation to be as good Muslims, then you are not just going after dunya. You are managing your stresses and you know stresses will come. Brothers and sisters, think about it. Speaking of stress management, 
Second point. Now, I'm giving you actually solutions. So seven solutions, keep it in mind. Number one is we have to manage it. And I gave you examples of school, education, you know, uh, not procrastinate a lot. Some procrastination is okay. For instance, oh, yes, today is Jum'ah. It's okay. I'll take my Jum'ah easy and Saturday, Sunday, I'll work hard. No problem. That's fine. That's not really procrastination. That's like, okay, managing my time. Manage your time. Second thing is remember the examples of those who have had stress around us, among our parents, our, our loved ones, our family. And who is the most loved one to every Muslim among the humans? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. God, look at his life. Since he's a child, loses his father, then loses his mother, then his only caretaker, his grandfather loses him. Then nobody wants to take him except one uncle who actually, he goes and sits in his lap and the uncle is like, okay, I'll take care of him, subhanAllah, you know. Nobody wanted him, Allahu Akbar. In fact, when his grandfather died, he was left by the grave of his grandfather and people didn't even know where Muhammad وسلم, is that orphan child. Allah says, Muhammad, weren't you an orphan? Look how I took care of you. Look at his life. Then he, subhanAllah, he has, mashallah, uh, you know, beautiful wife and, you know, she's very supportive and all that. Then all of a sudden, subhanAllah, he loses her too within a couple of decades. He loses her. He loses his sons. He loses his daughters. The man buried almost all of her children in his lifetime. Imagine you and I went through that. People will become atheists on that. Oh God, why did you do this to me? No. So examples of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu will tell us that Look at his, only his personal life. And then we talk about the professional life, like a prophetic life. Look at that. Oh my God. Who has been through what prophet has been through? He says, no prophet has been tested as I have been tested. Was Allah punishing him? Astaghfirullah? No. Prophet said, a believer, a true believer. If you are doing the right thing, you know that you are, nobody is perfect as Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's example is. But we know that, okay, nothing was done wrong. I have critically evaluated myself that I have not sinned, I have not done haram, I have not hurt anyone, it's not a bad karma. And still Allah is testing me, no, that Prophet told us that your, your rewards will be increased, you will be a high rank person in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like someone going through an avalanche and making it to the top of the Mount Everest. Look at the reward. That's Jannah. For the believers. So remember the examples of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are the key points. And then number three, which was actually our beginning. The main thing, Quran. Recite Quran on daily basis. If you can do one or two ayats, or at least remember these ayats, the ones I told you. One I recited from Surah Nisa, one I recited from Surah Taghabun, then from Surah Talaq, then from Surah Waduha, and a big, big, big hope in Surah Alam nashrah laka sadrak, which is Surah 94 of uh, Juz 30, last Juz of the Quran. Allah says, indeed, after every difficulty, there is ease, ease, ease. Indeed, Allah again says, indeed, then indeed, after every difficulty, there is ease. After hardship, after stress, there is comfort. There is relax, relaxed moments of life. It will happen. Prophet had that. Many of those, alhamdulillah, joyful moments. And enjoy those in the halal way. So, Quran. Then find shelter in these hadith and beautiful sayings of Prophet Sallallahu And number four is, which I've given you, I think, two, uh, four of them so far. Um, do the righteous deeds. Do the righteous deeds. Good deeds. Good actions. A'mal salihah That will please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then number five is give sadaqah. Charity. Charity actually will prevent harm. Prevent difficulties. Prevent diseases prevent a lot of things that will cause stress. Actually, sadaqah will remove the causes of stress from your life without you even knowing it. Subhanallah. It's like someone else will take care for uh, for the pathway for you. If there are nails that will get, get you a flat tire, somebody will be removing those. What is that? That is sadaqah. Allah says sadaqah will become a shield for the believer. That's five, right? Number six. A lot of astaghfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, Prophet of Allah. Well, astaghfirullah means I am asking Allah. So after charity, you as much charity you can do. You can do charity with your time, with your efforts. Um, if, if you don't have money, you can do a lot of extra, you know, things that will not cost money, but actually it is worth more than money. There's many ways of doing charity. For instance, this effort that you and I, we're doing right now for one another, it is a form of sadaqah. 
Allah will reward us through that. Allah will protect our families, our children, our loved ones, our fathers and mothers, and God knows who, and our own lives from difficulties because of it. Subhanallah. And then when you do astaghfirullah, oh my God. Astaghfirullah, Prophet Nuh, and every Prophet told their people that if you ask God for forgiveness, Allah will postpone adab from you, no matter how wrong you have been, no matter how bad, how evil you've been. Just say astaghfirullah. Prophet said, Allah has forgiven me. Even if I did a mistake, I still do 100 times astaghfirullah. What is astaghfirullah? Allah forgive me. Allah forgive me. Allah forgive me. That's it. Keep saying that, but say it in the prophetic way, in the Quran's way. Wa astaghfirullah, Quran orders us. Allah orders us in the Quran. We say, yes, I say, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Allahumma inni astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Or just say, astaghfirullah, 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 three times after every salah, and hundred times in the day, at least in one day. And you know the benefits of istighfar? Allah says, I will give you provisions from the top, from the beneath, from everywhere. I'll give you children. I'll give you good life. I'll give you pleasures of life. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah only. And the least benefit of astaghfirullah will be adab of Allah, punishment of Allah in this world will be postponed upon you. Allahu Akbar. See the benefits? And that, so it, it's a de-stressor. It actually removes the causes of stress from our life. You're stuck in an exam. Say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, Allah will open your mind and you will get something. Subhanallah. Uh, that's, that was sixth. And last one is, is all the du'as that we can make. And actually there's a du'a I want to leave you with and we can have discussions. Please ask any questions you want because uh, you're, you know, subhanallah, nobody sees you uh, when I am re recording this on my channel, but it's a private uh, recording. It's not a public. Uh, when you do du'a, du'a is the greatest weapon of a believer. It is the greatest support for a believer. It's a, it's, it has miracles. Uh, example of Yusuf alayhi salam. Remember what kind of stressful life he had? How he was jailed? How he was trapped into this whole seduction scandal? Astaghfirullah. According to a narration, Prophet Sallallahu told us, according to a narration, remember the words of the ayah? Listen to this ayah actually in the voice of the best Qari that you know of, you know, anybody except me, of course. I, I have not published most of my Quran recordings anyways. Listen to Mishari, Abdul Basir, someone, this surah. And then read the transition. And then I'll, you will listen to the, uh, or think of the dua that I'm going to teach you, inshallah, right now. Please make a note of this dua. Allah says in the ayah, whoever is obedient to Allah, whoever has love of Allah, fear of Allah, in the cases, whatever cases we're in, Allah will find him a makhraj, outlet. And Allah will give him from the sources that he does not even expect. And everything is on Allah's fate. In Allah's great book, it's documented, it's written, it's planned. Allah has a plan. Yusuf alayhi salam, Jibreel came and told him, pray to Allah. Pray to Raka'ah, I think he said. And then he said, make this dua. The dua Jibreel taught Yusuf. The dua was, Allahumma ja'al min amri faraja wa makhraja. The words of the Quran. Just like the words of the Quran. Prophet Yusuf. Thousands of years before Prophet ﷺ. Same words were taught. See? Islam has the same message that was always the teaching of every Prophet. And then he says, Allah, warzuqni min haisu la ahtasib. Allah, find me a, a refuge, an outlet, a shelter. Relieve me from this difficulty that I am in. You know what Yusuf was through. La ilaha illallah. Years, decades in the jail. Can you imagine going through that? In prison. Allah Akbar. Those days, we're not talking about prisons of 21st century, which are 100 times better than what was in the past. Horrible, horrible conditions. And he says, Allah, oh Allah, you are the one who can let me out of this. Get me out of this. And provide me from the sources that I don't know of. Jibreel came to teach him this dua. And look at the life of Yusuf after that. Allah found him an outlet, and such an honorable outlet that nobody could have imagined. Same Yusuf who was in prison now is the treasurer of the entire nation. In fact, regions around Egypt also were benefiting from that. So inshallah, I'll close on that. So seven benefits I've covered. Quran, Sunnah of Prophet ﷺ, Quran and those hadith that give us comfort. Some of those I've re related to you. And even if you can regularly just read Quran and hadith, you will find pearls for use too. Then events, examples, especially Prophet ﷺ's life and the companions and of course previous prophets is part of that. Then number four, uh, is doing sadaqa. Number five is doing istighfar. Number six is doing good deeds. Just regular good deeds, good a'mal. Try to do those. 
okay that will help you in fact i have had most stressful courses and classes allah made them easy for me just because i took my time out of my study time and i went and did something for somebody allah made it I mean, an outlet for me i did not even expect that subhanallah still with an a not with a c <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And last but not the least, the very critical one is dua, dua, dua. And mashallah, I was very happy when I saw sisters sharing um, uh, the duas for de-stressors. Beautiful duas. Uh, keep all those duas with you. I shared with you the dua that Allah taught to Yusuf السلام, according to a beautiful narration. Um, Quranic duas. Rabbi zidni ilma. Rabbi shrah li sadri. Wa yassir li amri. Dua of Musa alayhi salam. All these. These are seven takeaways for you as action items and three were belief items so i gave you three belief items and seven action items inshallah you can ask any questions sorry for the interruption in the middle we have kiddos came that uh, affected my train of thought but alhamdulillah we, we were back on the track inshallah so please feel free to ask any questions related to stress remember when we're talking about stress we're not talking about medical conditions uh, of depression that's a medical condition not self-diagnosed, properly diagnosed by a reliable uh, medical expert. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about the stressors that may lead to diseases and problems and other things. May Allah help us all and guide us all, inshallah. Questions, please. I have, I have, believe me, there are many, many powerful examples that I have to share. Uh, wallahi, I'm thinking because this is a new, mashallah, relatively newer MSA team. And of course, we. Uh, I want to bring in even those brothers and sisters who have been part of MSA and do a follow up on this maybe. And that's why I'm recording it, inshallah, on YouTube. It's private, so we'll share the links. People watch this and then we can do one where everybody just shares their experiences. Just share your, share your experiences and how you manage it and, and, and I can give personal life examples. I'll give you two. I took a class here at Western. A professor was so racist. I didn't know that he's racist. See, never judge someone just because, oh, he's white, so I know he's racist. No, 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 no. Uh, believe me, your own people can do more racial and hurtful things than the others. You know what I mean? So I didn't assume or anything like that, but subhanAllah, the guy... Uh, I, I knew my grade in class was like going to be either B, maybe A minus, something like that. The guy gave me an E, failing grade. And uh, this was false. I ha And luckily, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I had some of the previous exams, uh, or like past tests and all that, whatever. The long story short, I came to masjid and actually, this is how I managed that. Of course, this is where I had to blame him. I knew he's wrong, but then I thought my life is over because if I fail that class, I would be delayed by at least one year in, for my engineering, electrical engineering degree. So this could happen to all of you. First thing I did, I came to masjid. If let's say I could not come to masjid, go to your room, put on your sajada and pray to rakah. If you're not in a timing situation to pray, hold the misbah in your hand and start doing dhikr, tasbih. With misbah or without misbah, start doing dhikr. So I was sitting here. Actually, this place is very dear to me. This spot, actually, right there on uh, on my right hand side. I was sitting there and I I was listening to somebody's Quran. We were doing a Quran halaqa and I I had tears in my eyes. I was trying to hide them. And one of the seniors, may Allah give him highest place in Jannah, he looked at me. He says, "Why are you are you okay? You seemed very stressed today." I said, "Well, I have a professor. He's treating me very bad, and he's." turning a failing grade for me and I know I don't have a failing grade this is false he said ya walad what's wrong with you didn't you read the Quran wallahi he read that ayah to me wa man yattaqillah yaj'al lahu makhraja you came to house of Allah you made dua to Allah Allah will find you an outlet wallahi this is what happened to me I went to the chairman of the department and subhanallah my grade was overturned because the chairman 
uh, investigated and they found out that my grade was actually BA, BA, uh, A minus basically, or BA. SubhanAllah, that's one example where somebody had to be blamed. Second example is just like your question, SubhanAllah. Wallahi, this was, sister, a professor that I hated the most. I said, this guy is a killer. He's like giving us the most difficult questions. What does he want from us? I never studied in any class as much as this one class. Me and my other partner, we were doing final project. We would come home and we're like, oh my God, we're dead. But wallahi, what we started doing was, that's a, that's a funny solution, that, okay, let's play some ping pong, table tennis, and get the stress out. Uh, go to a tennis court or a squash court. Find some healthy activity, not something that is a that is going to take you to another hyper mode of like some virtual gaming and all that. Gaming is not a solution. Some physical activity, some type of de-stressor. It could be even salah. Of course, we did the salah and then we went for sports. And every time he gave us a stressful meeting, he was our project in charge for our senior design project. And he would tell us, you guys will fail this course. <laughs> so we would be like scared to death. He gave us stress. He was giving us stress. See, sometimes it's not just us having stress. It's like others giving us stress or we sometimes can be giving us stress. Now I'm in a position of uh, teaching uh, and of course learning both. Sometimes I end up giving stress to my students and I feel like, no, I shouldn't do that. Then I find ways to ease it up for them. So one of the solution is don't give up and try not to get fixated on the person's problem like okay this might be a professor's nature that he's teasing you he's giving you a hard time but at the end of the day he wants you to succeed have that positive attitude and just don't give up take it like you're in a battlefield yes there's gonna be things thrown at you you're gonna fight it off defend yourself and make it through inshallah i hope these two examples will help so it depends on a situation if someone is truly being biased and very bad you may have to try legal avenues or, and this can happen at workplace also, but first always try to navigate around, try to win their hearts. If they're, even if they're being biased or racist, because it might m make a difference, not just for you, for hundreds and thousands of others. Think about that. Have that bigger goal. You see, whenever we have a meaning in life and we know why something happened to us, stress will not hurt us. When you have a meaning in life, you have an objective that, yes, I know, I have a mission. I have to get through this avalanche. Hope that helps, inshallah. Other sisters, questions? Other, uh, any, uh, does that help, sister, inshallah? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. in our uh, life, uh, and, and all three of these avenues, whether it's academic, professional, and personal, they're all interlinked. They're, they're all interlinked. When, the, let's say, there is a stressor in life. Uh, for example, my um, parents, let's say I see that sometimes they give stress to each other. Let's say there's an argument between wife and husband. What do they do with that? They manage it and keep moving along. Because the other solution is, it's like climbing a Mount Everest. What happens is when we are raising a family, especially when we're raising a family, or when we are a family, a couple is a family. In Islam, it is actually worship to manage that stressful life and climb that Mount Everest. It looks hard, it looks stressful, painful, Sometimes we feel disgusted. Believe me, all of these, I'm, I'm a married person. And I've seen not just my parents' examples, so many other examples. It happens. These are those moments. But is it always 100% like that? No. 
ideal example is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and Aisha radiallahu anha. Absolute mismatch. A mismatch. Aisha radiallahu anha did not even know that she's going to marry Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Who wanted that marriage? Allah. Jibreel came and told Prophet sallallahu alayhi Oh my God, imagine the stress Prophet went through with that. Prophet had only two options. Deny. Jibreel, tell Allah to make it easy for me. Allah would have answered the dua of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is not saying, Astaghfirullah, I want to disobey Allah. Right? He says, Allah, get me out of this. I don't want to go through this. Let's say Prophet did that. Guess what would happen? Muslim Ummah would be deprived of thousands of hadith. Number one. Muslim sisters, wives, mothers, daughters would have been deprived of that feminine knowledge of Islam that only a female could discuss in a comfort level, in a comfort zone. You see the loss? That would, been, that would have been a loss of centuries, which would have been a loss to Prophet's mission also. Why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is so much influential? We must not forget that it's people around him that made his mission so gigantic that even non-Muslims are saying, oh my God, you know, how could this man have achieved all this? It's because he did manage it. He did manage that stressful thing that even non-Muslims today pick on Prophet Sallallahu marriage. The only marriage they pick on the most is the marriage of Prophet with Aisha. If this marriage would have been for uh, human desires, the physical, you know, lustful desires, I'm being blunt and honest about it, Prophet would have had dozens and dozens of kids. But that's not the case. So what Prophet did, despite the fears of what people are going to say, despite the mismatch, there was age mismatch, there was a lot of mismatches, Prophet Sallallahu accepted that as a recommendation from Allah and knew that there will be something good behind that. Remember the second point in our three management beliefs? What was the three ones? Can you help me, Hamna? Alim. First was Allah is Alim. And the second was Hakim. And then Rahman and Rahim. Yes. And of course, with Hakim, I explained it with two further subparts. But remember that he knew Allah has a plan. Allah is aware of this. There must be something good behind it. And that could we see today. You know, the most hadith of Islam is narrated by uh, Abu Huraira and Aisha. May Allah be pleased with both of them. May the peace and blessings of Allah be on both of them too. You can say that for non-prophets also. Definitely for prophets household. So I hope that helps inshallah. So always we have to sometime manage that. Because sometime. So I have. I believe me. I have had this. Sometime when I avoid a challenging situation. There's no reward. Nothing. <laughs> reward in this life also nothing. But when you take a challenge on. I mean, look at COVID. Look at all this setup. You see how, how many months it took me to ha develop this um, setup around here in this masjid? Me and my friend, we took it as a challenge. Uh, the brother that was here with us, he, he, is, he still goes to Western. Uh, he's a, our MSA member. Uh, uh, we don't see him in the meetings, but he's behind the scenes, mashallah. We took it as a challenge. We said, we're going to make this COVID problem turn it in our favor. You know? I had only a thousand subscribers on my channel when I started. Of course, my intention was not to gain subscribers. Not only are videos, you, you've not seen my videos like this on YouTube before. We started doing more work for da'wah. We changed a stressful situation in our favor by the help of Allah. We knew that there's some greater good behind that. Now it's more than 3,000 subscribers. And one day actually from uh, Georgia. Somebody called me, a friend who has not spoken to me at least in a year or so, more than a year. Hafiz, I saw you on YouTube, man. Oh, assalamu alaikum. So, see, a situation I could have easily avoided that, okay, I can just sit in my office or in my personal library, put a cell phone in front of me, hook up a lavalier mic, and assalamu alaikum, I'm on YouTube. Ah, you know, but we said, no, no, let's, so always look at that, the, that there is a greater positivity behind things and then it will be easier. Believe me, we all have stress. There are stressful events in life everywhere. 
we avoid one, another one, a greater one might be waiting on our way. So that's why deal it, deal with it and try to find some goodness in it. Try to produce goodness out of it. You know, alhamdulillah. May Allah guide us all, inshallah. Other sisters, any questions? Or brothers also? MashaAllah, we have brothers also. I was worried that, uh, man, where, where are the brothers? Brothers, we, uh, we all need uh, reminders, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. How come the Zoom didn't stop today? MashaAllah, it's a barakah, blessing going on with Zoom. Is my video working on your Zoom or is it just on YouTube? Uh, okay, you can see you can see us, right? So you can me. Uh, I mean, you can see me, correct? Okay, Alhamdulillah, Mashallah, Maz, go ahead, please. So understanding your question correctly, um, you would like to know like how um, how you would like to discipline yourself in the exam days or discipline in terms of achieving the um, targets, right? Papers and all that. Self-discipline, believe me, it's, it's hard. Uh, it comes sometime with age and with time. Uh, when I look at my undergrad days, oh my God, I hate myself sometimes. <laughs> so there are certain things that age will teach us. Or basically, if you've been through enough storms and hurricanes, then you would learn finally that, okay, this is how I should drive now. That's one way, the hard way to learn. It's like getting beat up, smashed, going outside in the cold and you know, gushing wind with snow and all the uh, other stuff with it hits you and then you get sick or you get, you know, something else and then you ask, oh, next time I'm not going to do it. That's one way, which is dangerous. This means a lot of Fs are waiting on our way. A lot of failing grades are waiting our way. Stuff will up. That's a hard way. Whereas the safe way is again managing the stress. You see, some people, when I say don't stress about it, this means, okay, I don't care personal life. I don't care what my mom and dad is saying or I don't care what my son and daughter is doing. Ah, alhamdulillah, let them have their life. I'm going to have my life. Horrible. Not good. Yeah, we got to stress about this thing. That there is. That I have to manage that stress. Don't end it. Similarly, in the academic life, I would say, okay, so what's the big deal? This project? Oh, yeah, I can get around it. I can easily copy paste from here and there, go to this source. I know one student actually did that. He said, oh, you know what? I got a solution. He hired somebody in India. A brother did that. So I'm, I literally mean a he. I hired a brother in India, do, did his project, turned it in, mashallah. Just before he was hoping for an A, uh, the professor felt something fishy. You see, your teacher knows you. Remember I said, how come Allah not know us if the teacher know us? Right? Teacher knows you what kind of test is giving you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how would he not know? So remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above all this. I'm not equating, just helping us understand. So the teacher felt something fishy. This happened at WMU just last year. Uh, they, they did a um, background test, IT background test. They found out from the IP address, you know the IP address, everybody has a unique IP address. Even if you're using a VPN, sometime they can track that and find it out. Uh, they found out that the assignment was turned in from India. And the brother is local. He's actually not even from India. He's from another Muslim country. <laughs> okay, now we know. And Astaghfirullah, he's facing disciplinary committee. They actually... Uh, I think either you put him on a probation, got an, uh, a failing grade, and so many bad things happen to you, right? That's dangerous. So you see, if whenever we say, okay, I don't stress about it, I don't care about it, I have a sneaky way, I have a shortcut, boy, that's dangerous. Even for a shortcut, you need to take a wise exit on the highway. 
there might be a ditch waiting for you. So that discipline is the key that I have to be extremely careful in how I conduct myself, especially in the end of the semester. Remember, we are toward the end of the race. Similarly, in our families, when we have children growing in a crucial age, the, the personality development, that's the opposite of the finish line. It is first five to seven years. They say a child develops their identity, key personality traits in the first five and seven years. And subhanAllah, this is where we're most negligent. I visited somebody, not to mention any details because it was a small community, people will know. Wallahi, the only child in this, in this family who has a very bad eyesight is the one that is always on a screen. The youngest child of this family, I've always seen that child on a screen. Either with a tablet, either with an iPad, you know, iPad, iPhone, you know, TV, smart TV, big TV screen, always on a screen. So that's a horrible thing. That's not discipline. So the solution is at least have some discipline. Some. Okay. I hate to dedicate 100% all weekdays, all weekends on study, study, studies. I want to give certain time to my family. Even in my undergrad days, I always did that. I have to make sure I at least call my parents at least once a day. If not, then every other day. I have to make sure that, number one. So I, I'm managing my time with that. And I have to make sure if I am busy, I will politely tell them firsthand that from I am busy from this time to this time. I'll be so much caught up. Inshallah, I'll talk to you right after. But let's say an emergency happens with them. Now I have to give priority. That's part of my discipline. Oh, no, my project is important, mom. And that might be astaghfirullah last time you would ever speak to mom. Astaghfirullah. Remember that. There are priorities. Parents are always above everything, even above our grades and our education. What if you have to take somebody to the hospital? Your roommate is dying. You say, no, no, man, my project is very important. That's not discipline. That's rudeness. That's meanness. And Allah would test me something wor with worse. That's why our professors are, uh, you know, and our professionals in our homes, everywhere, people understand that life happens. Be open to that. But at the same time, have at least that much discipline that I'm not going to be sneaky. I'm not going to be 100% sneaky. Maybe a little bit sneaky is okay. I'm not going to be 100% sneaky. You know, smart sneaky is fine. I'm not going to be, you know, some people uh, don't want to even look at the past papers. They don't want to even look at the pa other people's projects. No, you're trying to reinvent the wheel. It's okay. Take help with that. But don't just copy paste. See it as a guideline that, yes, this is how people have tread through this path. I'm going to use that. It's a good example. Or I'm going to be innovative. I'm going to do this with you. You see, your work will be better. But if you copy paste that or take the old exams in the <laughs> classroom on the exam day, ah, that's that's bad. That's very bad. That's bad sneaky. So be good sneaky. You know, okay, yes, I know the past papers. I know the mind or the trend, how the professor tests me. Fine, alhamdulillah. This is okay. This is not against the discipline. Do not try to reinvent the wheel in your education. Ride on the shoulders of the scholars. Ride uh, on the shoulders of the scholarship people, you know, like smart people. It's okay to make study groups and be, you know, professional. Don't, don't use these study groups as a means of socialization or haramanization and all that, inshallah. So hope these tips will help, inshallah. These are some tips I could give on the spot, inshallah. If I remember something else later on too, um, I can maybe text you or um, you can always see me in the masjid. Uh, brothers and sisters, you can always see me in the masjid, inshallah. Especially Fajr and Isha, these two prayers, inshallah. Most of the time, Fajr, Maghrib and Isha, almost every day I'm here, alhamdulillah. Other questions? I hope these tips, inshallah, will uh, help me also. Uh, believe me, I'm also taking some doctoral classes right now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Last call for any questions or anything about stress. Remember, three prong um, discussion we had um, academic, professional, personal. So, on all of these levels of stress in life in general, how do we manage that from using Quran and Sunnah? And mashallah, I think I'm sure you could go home with a lot of these ayat of the Quran that we've shared. Please do read those. Um, a greatest refuge that Prophet found help with was Surah Wadduha. 
that's the biggest, biggest antidepressant from the Quran. Listen to this surah with your eyes closed and then listen to the translation or read the translation. You know, sometimes you don't want to read something, your eyes are tired. Just play a recitation of the Quran where with the Quran you have transition also playing. You could do that or just listen to the surah first and have the transition played. You know, you can tog toggle and play with that with these apps, inshallah. I'll repeat, inshallah, just the transition of these ayat in the end. Allah says, if you obey Allah, if you fear Allah in all walks of life, meaning fear in the sense means that you fear him when you're about to slip away. Violation. And you love him when you follow him. So that's why the word is obedience of Allah. Taqwa of Allah. If you have taqwa of Allah, Allah will find you an outlet. He will provide for you from the sources that you might never expect. SubhanAllah. He will provide things for you. Not just rizq, not just food, provision, money, wealth. Other things. Other outlets. And whomsoever trust Allah, it is enough for him. That is enough. That is sufficient. And remember, Allah is a caretaker for all your affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, he's a caretaker. He will take care of it. He will accomplish. He will fulfill your purposes. All your things. Don't worry. Why? Because Allah indeed, everything, Allah has it in a measure, in in a fate, uh, in a book of fate, in a book of wisdom. It is called, you know, the book of Allah. Fate of Allah. Allah has it. Allah knows it. And then Allah says, if you obey Allah, Allah will make things easy for you. Allah will make things easy, not hard. Therefore, Quran tells us in Surah 93 and 94 that after, after every difficulty, there is ease. And you know, there is something linguistic, a miraculous thing of the Quran that will like literally shock us, like mind-blowing. In Surah 94, Surah Alam Nashrah, where Allah says, Muhammad, didn't I open your heart? To receive my message, my Quran, the Prophethood, and all the hard work, I open it for you. Huh? Didn't I make you honored among all the people? Huh? And remember, after every difficulty, there is ease. Something happened here, linguistic miracle of the Quran. Allah says, in usri yusra. I hope some of you know this surah, right? If you don't, please memorize it, read it in your salat. It has uh, that spiritual benefit. Allah says, in usri yusra. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Two times. You know the word for difficulty is a proper noun. And the word for ease, comfort, is a common noun. In Arabic language, when a proper noun repeats itself twice, it means it's only one difficulty. It's not difficulties. And when a common noun repeats itself, it means it's multiple. So inshallah, in a believer's life, in a Muslim's life, there will be difficulty, but not a lot. Inshallah, there's a lot of khair, a lot of goodness, a lot of ease, a lot of comfort. Have that belief. It's a linguistic miracle of the Quran. So the word for difficulty, the stress, is singular in its essence because it's a repeated proper noun. The word... For ease and comfort and goodness and beauties of life, inshallah, all the blessings is a common noun and it's repeated twice. That means you're going to have a lot of goodness here and inshallah and eventually in Jannah. May Allah give you and I that, inshallah ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Jazakumullahu khairan. Subhanakallahumma. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiru kama ratu bilik. Jazakumullahu khairan. May Allah guide us all, inshallah. Thank you so much, and uh, may Allah make your exams easy, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. I'm going to mute my mic, inshallah. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiru kama natubu ilaik.